Okay, so we have this problem that has to do with density of a bacteria population. Um, and when I'm reading these questions for the first time, I like to underline things so that, you know, later on when I need to refer to the uh, units, I can quickly uh, point them out. Um, and it helps with sort of processing information. So this bacteria is in a circular petri dish at a distance r centimeters from the center of the dish. And it's given by this increasing differentiable function f where f of r is measured in milligrams per square centimeter. And then we have this data table that corresponds to um, how, how much bacteria there is at r centimeters from the center of the dish, All right? And so our problem is saying to estimate f prime of 2.25. And anytime I see f prime, what I immediately think is the slope. And specifically, we're asking this problem is asking for the slope at r equals 2.25 centimeters, right? So um, when we want to find slope, we use our slope equation. So we plug in two values, uh, two points. So uh, in this equation, the two points would be x, x1, uh, f of x1, and x2, f of x2 and then we get the slope at that point. So um, we have this data, right? And we need to find which two data points we would plug into our slope equation to find that slope. So um, 2.25 would sit right here in the data table if there was an entry for it. So what this means is that we should probably take these two points into consideration to find our slope, right? That's the midpoint between 2 and 2.5. So um, let's say that x1 is 2.5, and then f of x1 would be 10. So we plug that in. And then we have x2 would be 2. So plug that in, and then f of x2 is 6. So now this just becomes a simple uh, subtraction and division. So 4 divided by a half. And when you divide by a half, um, you end up getting, you end up multiplying by two. So we get eight. So that's our solution. So, but now uh, there's a second part of the problem. Make sure you're addressing all parts of the problem. And it says, using correct units, interpret the meaning of your answer in the context of this problem. So uh, units, um, I underlined the units in the problem, but now we, we need to apply them to our answer. So, um, at the bottom, the, so one way that I like to do this is um, we found the slope, but for each, for the both the numerator and the denominator, each of those had uh, units that they came with, right? So the bottom was R, which we measure in centimeters. So I can just add it here, centimeters. And then up at the top, we had milligrams per square centimeter. So milligrams per square centimeter. So um, this would be our final unit for our interpretation, uh, but we're going to write it out um, in sentence form. So, um, and you want to draw, you want to include every single part of the answer. So just saying that it's eight milligrams per square centimeter per centimeter would not technically technically be correct because we want to also include the fact that we're 2.25 centimeters from the center of the dish. So it's good to be verbose here, um, but make sure you're actually saying the right thing. So for this problem, what I would say is uh, the density of a bacteria population 2.25 centimeters from the center of the dish is increasing at a rate of eight milligrams per square centimeter per centimeter. Okay, um, and so uh, there's one really important thing that I'd like to point out in my answer, and that's the fact that I use increasing. And how can I tell that it's increasing? Well. The answer that I got, 8, was positive, right? It wasn't negative. If it was negative, 
we would have a negative slope, and that would mean that our density is decreasing. But since it's positive, um, as the distance r increases, where the density of the bacteria population is also increasing. So I included increasing, and then I also included my answer and this uh, these units that I got from my little trick. Um, and that's how you solve part A. Okay. In this problem, we want to approximate the total mass in milligrams of the bacteria in the petri dish when we're given this expression. Um, and specifically, we want to do it with a right Riemann sum with four subintervals. Cool. So what immediately pops out to me is right Riemann sum. Um, as you might recall, what this means is that when we draw our rectangles, as I'm drawing right now, we want the right tip of the rectangle to be touching our curve. So that's what I'm going to do. If it was a left Riemann sum, we would be having the left tip of the rectangle touching the uh, curve, but we're not because it's a right Riemann sum. And then we have that f the four subintervals. So we have five points, we have four rectangles, everything looks great. Um, so, and then one thing I like to do, just kind of simplifies the equations later on, is uh, figuring out the width of the rectangle early on, right? So um, the width of this first rectangle is just one minus zero. How do I know that? The first point is zero. The second point is one. So this width is one. I don't know why I slanted it like that. <laughs> so the next rectangle, it looks thicker, but that's just because I'm bad at drawing. It's the same width as the first rectangle. It is like twice as thick. Oh my god. But anyway, it's 2 minus 1 because the third point is 2 and the second point is 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. And then we keep doing that process. We have 2.5 minus 2. 0 0.5 is the width for that one. And then for our final rectangle, we have 4 minus 2.5, which is 1.5. So we've got our widths figured out. Um, but now we want to... Uh, we need to use this equation to get the heights, okay? So um, the height of this first one is determined by r times f of r. Um, actually, let's, first of all, let's plop our 2 pi out on, on the front of this sum. Um, it's important to include this. It's being multiplied by the, um, the evaluation of this integral, but if, make sure you remember that 2 pi. So when r equals 1, uh, our height is going to be determined by 1, 1 is r, and then f of 1, which would be 2. So, 2. And then we have to multiply it by the height, or sorry, by the width down here. So, uh, by 1. And that is the first rectangle. But we have three more of these. So, let's keep. Uh, keep moving along. So we're going to say 1 times 2 times 1 plus what's the height of this second rectangle? Well, it's equal to 2 times f of 2. f of 2 is 6. And then times the width of that rectangle, which is the same as the last one, which is 1. So now we're at 2. Um, r equals 2.5. So our r is 2.5, our f of r is 10, and our width is 0.5. Uh, just pretend it wraps around. And then we have r of 4. This is our final rectangle. Our height here is um, r is 4, f of 4 is 18, and then our width, a little thicker than the last ones, is 1.5. So that is our entire Riemann sum. And if we do all that math, we get 2 pi times 134.5, which is equal to 269 pi. Right? Um, and Let's always add uh, our units, which it's mass in milligrams. So we say it is 26 
269 pi milligrams. And you can multiply by pi. I don't really do it. You don't need to. Um, but if you do multiply by pi and you get um, the approximate number, you want to uh, round it to the nearest three decimal points. Um, and that's how you do problem B.